How does your mother separate small pieces of stones and other impurities from wheat, rice and pulses? Yes, simply by picking them up by hand, one by one. The method of hand picking can be used for separating impurities that are easily visible to the naked eye and are present in small quantity in the form of dirt, husk and stone. Saving Sometimes we may wish to prepare a dish with flour. We need to remove impurities and bran that may be present in it. What do we do? We use a sieve and pour the flour into it. Sieving allows the fine flour particles to pass through the holes in the sieve while the bigger impurities remain on the sieve. In a flour mill, Impurities like husk and stones are removed from wheat before grinding it. Usually, a bag full of wheat is poured on a slanting sieve. The sieving removes pieces of stones, stock and husk that may still remain with wheat after threshing and winnowing. You may have also noticed similar sieves being used at construction sites to separate pebbles and stones from sand. Yes, you have. Very good. Magnetic separation. Magnetic separation is used to separate the components of a mixture when at least one of them is magnetic in nature. Try this out. Take a mixture of sand and iron fillings in a plate. Bring a magnet from a distance. What do you observe? As the magnet approaches the plate, the fillings get attracted and stick to the magnet. Thus, the iron particles in the mixture are removed by using a magnet. We have learned that separation of a mixture can be done by decantation, but can we separate all the mixtures by the process of decantation? Let us perform an activity to understand this. Take freshly prepared tea. Decant tea from tea leaves. Look at the decanted tea. What do you see? You will see that a few leaves are still in your tea. Thus, we can conclude that we cannot separate all the mixtures by the process of decantation. Then how do we separate all the tea leaves from the tea? Now take a strainer and pour the tea through it. Observe both tea and the strainer. What do you see in the strainer? You will see that all the tea leaves remain in the strainer. This process of separation of a mixture with the help of a strainer or a filter is called filtration. We will now perform an activity to learn about the process of filtration. Take soil and water mixture in a glass beaker. Now take a small piece of cotton cloth. Take another glass beaker and put the cloth on top of it. Now pour the mixture through the cloth. What do you observe? You will observe that soil particles remained in the cloth while the water passes through the cloth and gets collected in the second beaker. Do you know why? This is because cotton cloth acts as a filter. Let us learn how a cotton cloth acts as a filter. In a piece of cloth, small holes or pores are there in between the woven threads. It is actually these small pores that act as a filter. The soil particles are bigger in size 
than these pores. So, they cannot pass through these pores and remain in the cloth. While water molecules being smaller than the pore size of the cloth can easily pass through the cloth. Thus, by using a filter, we can separate out components of a mixture. We have learnt that clothes act as a filter. Apart from clothes, a filter paper is another type of filter that has very fine pores in it. Let us learn how to filter substances by using a filter paper. A filter paper is folded in the form of a cone. This folded filter paper is fixed onto a funnel. The mixture to be separated is then poured on the filter paper. Solid particles in the mixture do not pass through it and remain on the filter. While the liquid can easily pass through it and gets separated from the solid particles. In this way, we can filter liquid from a mixture by using a filter paper. Method of separation Winnowing As you have learnt earlier, grains are separated from the stalks by the process of threshing. However, even though the grains are separated from the stalks, they still have dried husk on them. This husk needs to be separated before the grain can be used. The method of separating the husk from the grain is called winnowing. It is used to separate heavier and lighter components of a mixture by wind or by blowing air. By this process, the husk is blown away, as it is much lighter than the grain. So, when the grains are gently dropped to the ground from a height, only the grains are collected and the husk is blown away. The separated husk is used for many purposes, such as fodder for cattle. Let us now perform an activity to learn this process in detail. Make a mixture of dry sand with sawdust and keep it on a plate or newspaper. Look at this mixture carefully. You will notice that the two different components cannot be made out easily. This is because their particle sizes are similar. Also, they cannot be separated by hand picking. Now take the same mixture to an open ground. Stand on a raised platform. Hold the plate with the mixture at your shoulder height. Tilt it slightly so that the mixture slides out slowly. What happens? The dry sand, which is heavy, falls at the same place, and gets collected on the ground. However, the sawdust, which is lighter than sand, gets blown away by the wind. Thus, with the help of the wind, both the components get separated by the process of winnowing.